Welcome everybody to today's episode of It's a Match. Today we have the pleasure to have with us Carlo Ressler, who is a member of the European Parliament, where he is among else Vice President of the Special Committee on Artificial Intelligence. Let's go! <laughs> Hello and thank you for the invitation. So, let's start. Let's go. <laughs> oh, come ah, on. Almost. You're, you're a serious player. <laughs> I'm trying. I really haven't played it for ages. Me neither. I think it uh, must have been 14, 15, <laughs> something like this last time. Yeah, yeah. We are playing strong defense. Okay, if you start to lose input, sorry, <laughs> just a second. <laughs> Oh. Okay, so you won, so this means that we will get an informal question. Do you have a favorite bit of Croatian culture? Anything? Music, literature? I mean, it's really such a diverse country because you have uh, this continental part that is uh, culturally really, really different than the coastal part, but. Um, I mean, I really love everything. I was uh, born and raised there. I'm from uh, Zagreb, from the capital, which is uh, somewhere in between of the country and where all these different cultural influences really uh, come together. Uh, but, uh, I mean, if I have to choose something, I really, really love Dubrovnik because it's uh, a special city. And, uh, I mean, it, there is a reason why this is one of the most uh, popular touristic destinations in the world. Yeah. I totally agree, I love the Brodnik. Okay, so wait, oh. Ha! That was fast. <laughs> Very fast. <laughs> okay, so again, but you have to make me score a little bit, otherwise yeah, it will yeah, be yeah, all, we'll... uh, <laughs> all fun, no politics. We can change sides. <laughs> ah, that's a funny one. Do you worry about robots taking over the world? Um, uh... I don't think it will really uh, happen soon in a way that uh, we will meet and greet uh, robots on the streets. But uh, to be honest, when you look already now uh, how fast things are evolving, you can see that uh, smart algorithms are really not taking over the world, but they are everywhere, uh, even when we are not completely aware of it. And uh, we'll have to get uh, used to it and have to uh, be flexible in a way that we'll have to uh, cooperate and understand that we will change as well with using uh, all those uh, smart modern technologies that we have already now. We already change, yeah. I guess, yeah. um, co compared to previous generations. Ball is not moving much. Right? Ah. You scored! <laughs> I scored! I scored! You're right! <laughs> okay, so, uh, you're a member of the European Parliament's delegation for relations with the People's Republic of China. Um, what do you think should be the EU's priority toward China now? Uh, I think that it's quite evident to everyone who is uh, following uh, what's happening that China really cannot be ignored uh, anymore and you can see that uh, throughout Europe as well. Uh, it's a global player that is becoming uh, more and more assertive at least, uh, so to say. And we'll have to have some kind of um, common European strategy, that's what's uh, happening. I would say that here EPP has a quite uh, normal, realistic, uh, balanced uh, approach that really takes um, China as it is. It's a society, a country that uh, has really completely opposite worldviews and views of the society and how it should be organized and we do have in Europe and uh, we should definitely not shy away from what Europe really uh, is uh, in our relations with China but at the same time we should uh, have that dialogue open and uh, try to uh, get as much as we can but at the same time really not be overly naive. Good, good answer, <laughs> very good. <laughs> wait, wait, if I cannot even catch it. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> uh, 
Okay, you're a member of the European Partners Budget Committee also. Uh, what major developments should people know about 2022? Well, the first thing to know about budget is that uh, it's not so uh, dry and technical as it seems at first. I mean, that was, uh, to be honest, even my impression uh, when I was choosing the committees, but it's really one of the most important uh, committees in the parliament because it is in the end uh, deciding where the, the limited resources, uh, money should go. And regardless of all our uh, political declarations and priorities, as we call them before the elections, in the end, the only real thing where you see what are the priorities of any organizations, and uh, in, that's the case for the European Union as well, is in the budget, in the really uh, way how you spend uh, these resources. So next year, uh, you can expect uh, throughout Europe um, the unprecedented package of investments mm -hmm. that is funded by the European uh, money, the European funds. Uh, but not any investments, but really investments mostly in green and digital uh, transitions. That is really something that's uh, important throughout Europe. But the uh, important part of this is to try to uh, decrease the differences that do exist still between different uh, member states. So uh, I would say that um, the use of the European funds will be different throughout Europe uh, this year, but I would say that in totality, it will really help us to, to change, it will help us to transform, and it will help us to be more ready and flexible for a really different uh, new world in which we are living it. And let's, as you said, with the limited resources, yeah. because uh, That's the new budget important. is always and very, very yeah, limited. Yeah. Now I'm having problems as well. Like that. But were you thinking about doing it maybe with more people? Like with... Uh... Two against two? Yeah. Mean? Yeah, that's an idea. I mean, an interview as well, but... <laughs> so interviewing two people yeah. and two of us on the other side. Yeah. Oh. Yes! <laughs> you scored. 3-3 three, three now, right? Yeah, so it's going better. Well, okay. Let, more let, or less. Let, let, let's say you... <laughs> <laughs> for. <laughs> you are the vice chair of the uh, European Parliament Special Committee on Artificial Intelligence in the Digital Age. Uh, how is this committee improving the lives of European citizens? So we touched a bit on that uh, with the Before, question on robots, but um, so the, the name of the committee is AIDA and it uh, sounds uh, so fancy, but uh, in essence its uh, main job is to try to make a plan or at least some kind of guidelines for dealing with the artificial intelligence but with digital transformation in general because artificial intelligence is uh, this central technology that is uh, leading that new industrial uh, revolution and it's quite evident that already now it's influencing our labor markets, uh, national security, educational uh, programs and uh, because of that it's important that we as Europeans uh, continue with our unique uh, European model that is uh, somewhere between the two extremes. Uh, one which is having uh, completely individualistic but also a profit uh, focused uh, approach on, on one side and then on the other side some kind of uh, collectivistic uh, societies and um, ideas that are basically using that new technology, artificial intelligence, uh, namely, uh, for control. And uh, we want to really maintain uh, our approach, which is uh, human-centered, but which at the same time is uh, trying to give the opportunity to European companies to remain and be innovative and competitive on the, the world stage because we really understand that in the field of artificial intelligence there is that uh, technological race, mm -hmm. global technological race uh, around. So the idea of AIDA is to help and to lead uh, that uh, from the European Parliament's point of view. And to keep a balance between the two uh, priorities, yes. the TPP yes. is PP specialty, no? Okay, we have the last one. So that's the deciding one. Yeah. Okay, so we decided that to get a goal against yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, okay, no, I, I don't think that's fair. We have to do okay. another one, yeah. 
very nice of you. But I think you are better than the than Nathan. No, yeah, no, 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 it seems so, really. No, oh, again! <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I think, no, think the there's the 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 some imbalance. Uh, it's much more <laughs> twisted like that. No, this was Maybe now it's very okay. square. <laughs> well, well played, thank you. Thank you. You scored, funny question. Any particular hobbies? Hobbies. Uh, not so much time for hobbies, unfortunately. I mean, I, I love sports, um, not only like this, but uh, hiking, uh, walking, uh, football, uh, sailing in the summer at the, Adri at the Adriatic. But um, with three kids uh, at home and uh, tr me traveling from uh, Brussels to Zagreb every week, uh, that's uh, a bit difficult and a luxury, so it, that's not always uh, possible. But uh, I try to use uh, the time for my family, for uh, nice uh, weekend walks or uh, things that uh, my kids want to do. But basically that's it, unfortunately, at this point of my life. Uh, that's a very frequent answer. I don't have much time <laughs> for hobbies uh, between MEVs. For those who think that MEVs don't, uh, yeah. don't, don't, don't work hard, I yeah. think uh, they're much hard working than... Uh, than most uh, national parliament. No, I think that uh, the biggest difference is this dynamic of uh, traveling. So mm -hmm. if I travel every week, uh, if I come here on Monday and then come back home to you know, on, on Thursday evening, then there's just not much time Everything for, for free time. Yeah, but uh, Friday is reserved for more or less uh, meetings um, and then weekend for, for family. Okay, thank you. Yeah.